This lesson continues the discussion of the PLC processor scan sequence. And a quick reminder, if you're trying these exercises at home, make sure that your processor is in the run mode. This is where we left off with our last lesson. We had set up these two little arrows to transfer information between the processor and the input and the output modules. But we also said that many people have misconceptions about those transfers because they think that the transfers take place instantly. Let's take a slow motion look at this important idea. First, notice that switch A is open in the field, so we have no current flowing in the circuit. The bit box for switch A contains a zero. No surprises here. Now let's go back to switch A and turn it on. So now we do have current flowing in the input circuit. And when we look at the bit box for switch A, we expect to see a one. But that's not happening yet. Remember that we're looking at this in slow motion, so milliseconds count. Now let's move over to the output side of the system and see what's going on over there. Here's the bit box for lamp E and the bit contains a zero. And the contacts in the output module are open and lamp E in the field is off just like we expected. Now let's go back to the bit again and manually put a one in the box. Now we expect to see the contacts close and the lamp to come on. But as you probably guessed, there's a lesson to learn about the output side of things too. Now things like this wouldn't happen in a perfect world and they don't happen in many beginner level PLC classes either. That's because some instructors don't even mention this type of stuff even though it's critical to fully understanding PLCs. Let's make sure that we recognize the problem. Notice that the switch is closed in the field and electrical current is flowing, but the bit contains a zero instead of a one. And understanding that discrepancy could be critical in certain beyond beginner troubleshooting situations. The output bit contains a one, which should turn the output in the field on, but the output in the field is still off. So we have another discrepancy that could be important once you leave the beginner level behind. And with the boot camp approach, that's usually less than an hour into the course. The trick is that there's nothing really wrong here at all. The PLC processor just needs a few milliseconds to catch up with reality. The common misconception that these transfers of information to and from the processor happen instantly simply isn't true. They're fast, but they're not instantaneous. And just as important, they're not random either, at least not in the systems we're covering. Okay, let's nail this all down starting with the input side. This little arrow shows the direction of the transfer, but now we need to talk about when the transfer actually takes place. We'll use this symbol to show step number one of a three-step scan cycle sequence. In normal operation, the processor does this step in the scan cycle several hundred times each second, and each time it does, it updates the status of the input bits with fresh information from the input module. Remember that we're still looking at all of this in slow motion mode. Now let's watch the bit box while we wait for step number one to come around. Notice that at this point in time, the bit still contains a zero, even though the switch in the field is on and current actually is flowing through the input circuit. Now, just milliseconds later, the processor finally gets around to doing step number one. First, it checks the input circuit to see if there's current flowing, and there is. Then it goes to the input bit, and it updates the input bit by putting a one in the box. And now the data in the bit matches the conditions in the field. Now let's see what that same operation looks like in the RS Logic software and this could be misleading. When you flip switch A on and off, the bit changes from a one to a zero so fast that it certainly does look like the transfer happens instantly, but it doesn't, that's a misconception. Actually, the transfer happens only once per scan cycle, precisely on step number one. And now for the output side. Next, we need to talk about when the transfer is shown by this little arrow takes place. Here's the step in the scan cycle that takes care of the transfer, and notice that it's step number three not step number two the way you might have guessed. The processor does this step several hundred times a second too, and each time it does, it sends the status of the output bits over to the module. Suppose that we stay in slow motion mode and just watch the contacts for a few milliseconds. Nothing changes at all until the processor suddenly comes around to do step number three. The processor checks the status of the bit box and sees a one. Then he sends this one status over to the output module and that tells the module to close the contacts and lamp E comes on. And if we try to look at that sequence in the RS Logic software, once again, we find that the transfer of information from the bit to the output device takes place so fast that we can't see the step-by-step -step action at all. It's so fast that it looks like it's instantaneous, but now we know that's a misconception. Actually, the transfer takes place only once per scan cycle, precisely on step number three. Now we've seen step number one and step number three of the processor scan cycle, you might be wondering about step number two, and here it is. Step number two in the cycle is when the processor executes the ladder logic program. The processor in our example is actually doing this step in the cycle two several hundred times a second, 
but the only thing in step number two right now happens to be the end rung, so that doesn't give us too much to talk about. Naturally, that's going to change in a future lesson when we start to dig into how the processor actually goes about executing its program. Now let's take a deep breath and reset everything and take a look at what we've just been through. If you light up all of the steps we've just covered in this lesson, it might start to look a little complicated. And don't worry about that because when you go through the boot camp course, you'll work through problem after problem until all of these steps become second nature to you. For right now, let's just clear away some of the clutter and take a big picture look at what's constantly going on under the hood of the PLC. If you connect the dots, you can actually get a pretty good idea of how the processor goes about his step number one, step number two, step number three business of controlling the system. And actually, there's one more step to the cycle that we haven't mentioned. It's usually called the processor's housekeeping step. There's not much to it that concerns us right now, so we'll save that lesson for another day. And now for a quick little side trip. Earlier we said that we weren't going to cover the control logic system in this series of videos. In spite of that, here's a quick preview of what's involved in that platform. The big ticket differences are shown in red. The most important thing to notice is that the one, two, three step scan cycle that we've been talking about is completely gone and the individual steps are not synchronized the way they are in the systems we're covering in this series of lessons. This thing has random written all over it. Anyway, if you need control logic skills, we have five-day boot camp classes available for that platform too. So here are the three steps that we're concerned with right now. And in the RS logic software, even though you can't see the behind the scenes action taking place, the processor is constantly doing that step number one, step number two, step number three, scan cycle sequence that we've been covering. The current yes or current no status of the input circuit is being transferred from the input module to the bit box in the processor. That transfer happens each time the processor does step number one of the cycle and updates the input bits. Then the processor runs over and executes the ladder logic program. Of course, at this stage of our lessons, all the processor has to do is execute the end run, but that still qualifies as step number two in the cycle. Next, the processor sends the one or zero status of the output bit boxes over to the output module, and so to the output devices in the field, and that takes care of step number three. This is what you see on the screen, and this is what the PLC is doing several hundred times a second in the background, even though there are no inputs and no outputs in the processor's ladder logic program yet. Worst of all, since you can't see these behind the scenes operations taking place, it's easy to underestimate their effect on the PLC's operation. Even technicians with years of experience can fall into this trap. Many other PLC training companies explain the PLC's input and output signals this way. Notice that it completely bypasses the bits and the timing issues that we've just covered. Even so, this watered down approach is sometimes good enough, just as long as you stick with simple beginner level problems. Now compare this to the level of detail that we build into each of our boot camp classes. The truth is, that there are many real-world problems that you simply cannot understand or troubleshoot without dealing with the scan cycle and with its timing issues. We've already shown you one example back in lesson number one of this video series. And now we're ready for our next lesson.